Hi, I'm Eric Paul, the Chemistry Guru, and you are watching H2 Chem Hacks, making H2 Chemistry simpler, one video at a time. Hi everyone, in this video we'll go through the nucleophilic substitution mechanism for halogenol alkenes. Now actually there are two types of nucleophilic substitution reactions, we'll go through one of them in this video, which is my SN1 uh, mechanism for tertiary uh, halides. Now let's look at the uh, example that we'll be using in this case. So we have this uh, particular uh, tertiary uh, halide, tertiary bromide. So we have a carbon attached to three methyl groups attached to a Br. So uh, equivalent substitution involving my OH minus. So the mechanism will be SN1. So I just read this as uh, SN1 here. Uh, so basically, what happens is the uh, OH minus will go in and kick out the Br minus. So you form your alcohol and uh, Br minus as a product. <coughs> now again, before we go into the mechanism uh, proper, we want to explain why uh, endogenic alkanes undergoes nucleophilic substitution reaction. Now basically, this S represents substitution, N represents uh, nucleophile. So how come our endogenic alkane undergoes uh, nucleophilic uh, reactions or it reacts with a nucleophile? Actually, this is fairly simple because when you have carbon attached to Br, which is more electronegative, so Br will carry a partial minus charge. So therefore, carbon will carry a partial positive charge. So if my carbon is positively charged, it will attract a nucleophile, which is negatively charged. So basically, my carbon, which is delta positive, attracts a nucleophile, which is uh, negatively charged. Now how about substitution? Again, it's fairly simple for us to determine why halogenic alkanes undergo substitution reaction because when this nucleophile comes in and attack my carbon then my carbon cannot hang on to 5 groups because it is already saturated so what this must mean is when my nucleophile comes in the carbon must kick up another group so it can only undergo substitution reaction it cannot undergo addition reaction now let's go through SM1 mechanism in detail so we start off with our halogenyl uh, alkane now, what happens first is my CBr bond will break and both electrons will go to Br. Now, this step will be the slow step. The product form is both electrons go to Br, so we get a Br minus. Then, what about this particular carbon? Now, this particular carbon will now be short of one electron, so it becomes positively charged. It forms my carbocation. So now we have our product, my carbocation and my Br minus. Now this carbocation will be involved in the second step. What happens next is my OH minus will come in. My OH minus, which is negatively charged, will attack my carbocation, which is positively charged. Of course, the product form. You get your C bonded to OH and you form your alcohol. Now the mechanism itself is pretty simple, but we want to have some conclusions derived from here so that we can compare with another mechanism uh, in nucleophilic substitution, which is my SN2 mechanism. So, so in general, there are three ideas we want to discuss. Now what you need to keep in mind is SN1 mechanism is a two-step mechanism. So keep in mind, SN1 mechanism is a two-step reaction, it's not a one-step reaction. Now second thing we have to talk about is the rate equation. Now rate equation, of course, I can derive it from the slow step. So the first step is my slow step. You notice there's only one halogenyl alkene involved in my slow step. So therefore, it's first order with respect to halogenyl alkene. So the rate equation, is equal to a constant, a constant multiplied by the concentration of RBR, which is my halogenic alkane, uh, order 1. What you notice is from my rate equation, I can have some uh, deductions. The first thing is the rate of the reaction is independent of the concentration of OH minus. Another idea we can get from our rate equation is this is an overall order 1 reaction. So therefore, it's considered as an SN1 mechanism. 
So basically the number one means that the overall order of this particular mechanism is overall order one. Now it's also good for us to know what type of halogenic alkanes will favor SM1 mechanism. In general, tertiary halides will favor SM1 mechanism. Why is this the case? Is because S1 mechanism involves the formation of my carbocation. So what you notice if we have this particular carbocation and the stability of this carbocation is affected by the number of electron donating arm groups that attach to this carbocation. So basically if I look at this particular carbocation, you notice it's attached to three arm groups and all of them are donating. So all these electron donating groups will push electrons to my C plus. So what happens you will make this C plus less positive so therefore it stabilizes the carbocation. So in general the more arm groups that are attached to this particular C plus the more stabilizing it is. So it's written here as more electron donating arm groups, more stable carbocation. So what this means is my tertiary halogen alkane will form a more stable carbocation. So it actually favors the formation of my carbocation because it's more stable. So it will favor the SN1 mechanism. So basically, we've gone through our SM1 mechanism for halogenic alkanes. We've gone through the steps involved as well as some discussions involving our SM1 uh, mechanism. Now, what we need to keep in mind is we need to compare this with SM2 mechanism, which we'll discuss in another video. If you have enjoyed this video, please share this with your friends. To learn more about H2 chemistry, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. If you want to know more about my H2 chemistry classes at Nisha, please visit my website. Thank you for watching H2 Chem Hacks. I hope I've made H2 chemistry simple for you. I'll see you next time.